I'm Mike, and in this episode, we're going to look at what should be the first immediate treatment for anybody with ALS, and anybody who wants to prevent ALS for that matter. And we're also going to look at Lou Gehrig's strange ALS-inducing habit, as well as the Ice Bucket people, the ALS Association, and how they are failing to educate people about this treatment. For those of you that aren't familiar with ALS, it stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. It's also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, and people like Stephen Hawking have it. It affects about 30,000 people a year in the US. It causes paralysis and kills most people who have it within just a few years. Now for what could be the missing link in the ALS mystery, and that is BMAA, or beta-methylamino-L-alanine. It is a neurotoxin that is created naturally by cyanobacteria, and cyanobacteria is ubiquitous in ecosystems worldwide. The story of ALS and BMAA begins on the island of Guam, where they had an ALS rate 100 times higher than the rest of the world in 1960. In some villages, one in three deaths could be attributed to ALS. Scientists originally found BMAA in the cycad nuts that the people ate there, but they realized that it was 1,000 times too low of an amount to cause any harm. And that was actually created by the cyanobacteria in the roots of the cycad and was accumulated up the tree. But see, ALS wasn't a historical issue in Guam, but in 1920, they got guns. And that allowed them to shoot a large amount of flying foxes, which spend their lifetime just nomming on these cycad nuts and bioaccumulating a thousand times as much BMAA. And that means that if you eat one bat, it's the equivalent to eating 2,200 pounds of cycad nuts. To drive that point home, people with ALS in Guam had super high levels of BMAA in their brain, while healthy Guamanians didn't have any or just a really low amount. And here's an overview of how BMAA accumulated. It goes from 0.3 micrograms per gram of free-floating BMAA in the cyanobacteria to 37 micrograms in the cycad nuts, all the way to 3,556 micrograms in the flying foxes, and finally 627 micrograms per gram in the brain of Guam residents with ALS. Then when they overhunted the flying foxes to point a population collapse, their ALS returned to levels similar to the rest of the world. And if you still don't believe BMAA caused their ALS, you can induce an ALS-like disease in monkeys by giving them BMAA in a lab, which is horrible. But what's the actual mechanism of this? Well, in ALS, it is your motor neurons that die. Your motor neurons control motor function or muscles. And so as they die in increasing amounts, you lose more control over different muscles in your body. And that's exactly what BMAA does. BMAA kills motor neurons. You can demonstrate this in a lab. This study said, quote, BMAA was found to induce selective motor neuron loss. See, BMAA is pretty similar to the naturally occurring amino acid in your brain called L-glutamic acid. Essentially, it tricks your body into thinking it's L-glutamic acid, in which case it gets transported across the blood-brain barrier and goes into the glutamate receptors on your cell. This causes a misfolding and kills your cell. Now looking at ALS outside of Guam, you can measure the hair of people with ALS and you'll find a higher level of BMAA than healthy people. And to seal the deal, looking at people in Canada, you can find BMAA in virtually all brain samples taken from people with ALS, but not with people with Huntington disease, which is a similar disease that we know to be just genetic. And of course, healthy people, you cannot find BMA in their brains either. But where is all this BMAA coming from? Clearly not flying foxes when you're talking about Canada. Well, cyanobacteria are approximately 50% of the phytoplankton community of the open ocean covering over half the earth. So this stuff is literally everywhere. And BMAA is produced by virtually all cyanobacteria, and this is where it becomes a concern for the rest of the world. From this book, Diving in Subaquatic Medicine, quote, BMAA is concentrated up the marine food chain until the food is consumed. This study from Florida found astonishing levels of BMAA in various species. Just looking at fish in random rivers in Florida, they had the same level of BMAA as those flying foxes. And it's not just top predators. Even some shrimp had the same level as those flying foxes from Guam. And this brings me to Lou Gehrig himself. Quote, Lou Gehrig would rather fish than eat, said Babe Ruth in Babe Ruth's autobiography. And the smoking gun from this news article, Lou has always been crazy about pickled eels straight from his mother. 
back to diving in subaquatic medicine, quote, shark, tuna, eel, and large crustaceans become harbingers of this toxicity. When you have pickled eels, you can get a dose of BMAA anytime, anywhere. You just take out the pickle jar and eat some BMAA, which leads to prolonged exposure, which could obviously cause ALS in this case. Now for these ALS clusters, which seem to appear around lakes and other bodies of water that have 10 to 25 times the normal rate of ALS. Some scientists say it might be drinking tap water after algae blooms, but when you actually look at the data, it's very unlikely and it's mostly caused by the seafood, what people tend to eat around bodies of water. This study illustrates that idea with three ALS patients from Maryland that all lived on the same street within half a mile of each other. They were, yes, next to the water, but they also all ate blue crab from the Chesapeake Bay on a weekly basis. BMAA levels of blue crab vary, but going back to that Florida study, they found some blue crab with twice the level of BMAA as the flying foxes of Guam. That's 20,000 times the concentration of just cyanobacteria's BMAA itself. And that really dwarfs the tap water algae bloom hypothesis. And moving on to this study of an ALS cluster in Wisconsin, they found that the most significant risk factor was the consumption of fish from Lake Michigan. These findings are extremely important because it not only gives people with ALS some hope, but it gives them something that they can do right now. And more importantly, it gives doctors a treatment that when someone comes into the doctor's office with ALS, they can say, stop eating seafood and we'll see how you do. And it's very important to ditch the seafood altogether because as this Oceana report showed, 33% of fish are mislabeled. The DNA does not match the name of the fish that is being sold. And in sushi restaurants, it's as high as 72% of fish mislabeled. This is where the ice bucket people failed us, the ALS Association. They raised $220 million with the ice bucket challenge and a lot of it did great things. It went to some community service related things and some research, but they really just failed to use those resources to educate people about seafood and BMAA. It's only mentioned once on the website in the last three years and you really have to dig for it. Turns out they put some money toward one of those studies that looked at tap water and algae blooms and BMAA. And as I just mentioned, you'd have to drink hundreds of gallons of really rich algae bloom tap water to get anywhere near the levels of BMA from eating some shrimp, some crabs, some any of those fish, really. And it is a fact that the people of Guam reduced their ALS levels by like a hundred times by just stop eating a certain animal product that had BMAA. In their case, it was bats. In our case, it will be seafood. We know that BMAA kills motor neurons. We know it's from seafood. So I have to ask the ALS Association, do you know about this? Are you willfully not telling people about this? They do have a little bit of a motivation to keep ALS uncurable. They may be a nonprofit, but people like the CEO make $340,000 a year. Year. Now, I don't want to just say, hey, they're horrible people, because this is pretty new information and there is a chance they don't know about it. So I say go out there and tell them about it. Why not? Looking to the future, ALS levels are rising and the algae bloom levels are rising. The dead zones are increasing. And this is largely caused by agriculture and nitrogen fertilizer runoff from grain and the majority, over 50% of the grain in the US is fed to livestock. And these animals are kept in confined animal feeding operations, which even the smaller ones create the waste of 400,000 people without any wastewater treatment facilities. And it just dumps into the watershed, gets in the water supply and causes those algae blooms, the cyanobacteria blooms, which just increases the levels of BMAA worldwide. So if you wanna tackle this problem, you can not just stop eating fish, but you can also stop eating other animal products that contribute to these blooms. As well as a massive destruction of the environment, and mercury has also been implicated in ALS. We get 95% of our persistent organic pollutants from animal fat, so it's worth cutting out if you're worried about toxins and ALS. Here's a team of non-vegan researchers, neurologists, and other scientists from multiple universities who study BMAA levels in fish, and they say, quote, it may be prudent to limit exposure of BMAA in the human diet. So there you have it. BMAA is certainly not the only cause of ALS, but it seems to be the most well-documented, well-studied driver of ALS, and therefore it should be the immediate first step treatment for anybody who has ALS to stop eating seafood. And anybody that's worried about getting ALS has maybe a familial connection there. They should also cut out seafood as a precautionary measure. And why not give out other animal products as well because they not only exacerbate dead zones and destroy the environment that way, 
They are also the way you get 95% of PCBs, mercury, and other persistent organic pollutants. If you know anybody with ALS, they're pretty rare, but I'm sure they'll find this information useful or at least interesting. Also, if you have some extra time, you might as well go to the ALS Association and make sure they know about this connection and how well established it is. All right, thank you for watching.